Can you honestly say to yourselves tonight that you're amazed that God wants to spend every day with you? What a blessing that was. Thank you. Uh, tonight, if you would, turn with me to the book of 1 John. If uh, I had a, I was doing some studying when Pastor asked if uh, I'd be interested in, in preaching tonight, and you know, it just so happened I was studying something that had been convicting my heart. Uh, since the beginning of uh, COVID, back in March 15th, when I decided to close the gate at the, count, at the camp. And you know, I thought, well, God has laid this on my heart. So this sermon tonight is for me, and if you guys get anything out of it, then praise the Lord. All right? But if I had to add a title to this message here, I would title it Test of Obedience. A test of obedience. There's three different sections here in the book of uh, 1 John in chapters 1 and 2 that deal with, with fellowship. And the first one is test of obedience and then test of love and then test of truth. So tonight I just set aside time for test of obedience and uh, hopefully we don't get done too early. But if we do, uh, forgive me. You can go home early. <clears throat> As we're faced... Today, with this time that we're in, I, I truly felt God leading me to take me back to the beginning. The beginning for me was in the month of June in 1989 as a 12-year-old young man who knew I needed a Savior. In that very evening at my great aunt's home, kneeling down by the bedside as she led me to the Lord, I knew I now had a Savior. When I ask Christ into my heart, we look here in this, in this first verse of 1 John, and it says that which was from the beginning. Think back at the beginning, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, the next word is God. I think if I were to wake up every single morning and the first thought of my mind was those three letters, God, I'd have a different perspective on each day. Back to the beginning, that day of salvation, the promises of our future, our eternal state. Take us back to the beginning, that time of hope, that time of joy. Do you remember that day? You see, 1 John here is speaking to believers, and I'm, I'm giving this message, <clears throat> excuse me, tonight, again, assuming all of us are believers. Go back to that time when Christ first came into your life. That hope, that joy, that passion, that excitement that you had. And I pray today that we still have that. I pray today that we can be excited to know that God is with us each and every day. Some of us in here tonight may be faced with new challenges. You know, back in March when COVID came out and we had no idea what was going to happen with the camp ministry, I honestly will tell you I had a tough time. You know, I knew that God had brought us out here and I knew that God had set us up with the perfect location, the perfect people, the perfect, just to me, the perfect everything. Now why? Why are we locking the gate? It was a question that I had, a question that I had, I had talked to my wife about night after night after night. I had reached out to pastor friends. I had talked to Pastor Gray. Why? What is going on? Maybe some of these challenges are challenges that you're facing as well. It's different. The world that we live in today is much different than it was for me two years ago. Maybe some challenges are a test of our faith. You know, God wants us to be faithful. Amen. God wants us to be faithful believers. And I think a lot of times, even in my life, I allow these distractions of the world around me to come in, which ultimately take me away slowly and slowly from that faith that God wants me to have in him. I was, I, I get sidetracked a lot when I study. Uh, my wife can testify to this. And 
during this message, I got sidetracked. I got thinking of that show. I don't know if uh, any of you have seen it. It was called uh, Wipeout. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting to it. I was thinking of in, in that obstacle course of Wipeout, there's a straight, clear, precise path to get to the end. But many contestants would get distracted and out of left field get knocked off by something. Sometimes in our Christian walk, that happens to us. We lose our focus on that straight and narrow path and something big comes out of the left and just knocks us right off the course. And sadly, this happens over and over and over again in our lives until the timer runs out and time is up. When our timer runs out and time is up, is God going to catch us on that straight path or is he going to catch us in midair from what just hit us from left field? I think about that in my life. Just yesterday, we, we had a new freezer unit put in at the camp. The walk-in freezer died. And so we had to get a new freezer unit put in so that we could open the, the kitchen. Jackson came running into the office. Brother Scott, Brother Scott, the new unit is completely underwater. So I go running over there, and sure enough, it rained so hard where we were yesterday that the unit, which is two foot off the ground, was completely underwater. The fan was running, and it was spraying water across the yard. <laughs> so I was like, in one sense, praise the Lord, it's still running. In the other sense, we've got to pump this thing before it dies. And so I fixed that, and I come around the corner. The boys had left, and I'm looking at the, the pond area and see all the flooding there. And then Jen comes out of the office. Scott, Scott, come on, come on, come on. The sink is leaking in the office. At that point, I was done. I was like, are you kidding me? All just to find out in the end it was a blessing because they were trying to just get me in the office to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> you see, though, things in life can get us in such a disarray in our minds that we lose focus on the good things. Can we imagine just for a moment the blessings in our life that God wants us to, to see or reap or to get, but we miss them because we're too focused on little leaks in our life? Maybe during this time, many of our lives are challenged. We don't know what's next. The distractions that hit me and take me from the things that I believe God wants me to do are the same things that everyone in this room has access to. The news, the media, the social media. Those are the things that distract me. And I'm just being very transparent. It's very easy to get on social media and start fussing at what's going on about in Seattle, Washington. When my focus doesn't even need to be on the devices, it needs to be on Jesus Christ day after day. The challenge tonight is to encourage us to continue walking in the fellowship with Christ that our joy may be full, as we'll read. <clears throat> Here, beginning, in, I'm going to read the entire, entirety of chapter 1. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen, and... Uh, Heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, 
We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive, our, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. See, John here is writing this epistle to believers, as I stated before, members of churches there in Asia Minor. John's goal was to provide direction for those Christians who faced new challenges in their faith. You see, during this time, we have the opposing uh, teachings of the Gnostics. And so he was challenging them to keep their faith. I believe in our lives today, we should be challenged to keep our faith. There were various groups whose teaching opposed Christianity. Now, maybe I watch too much news or I watch too much TV, but I see those opposing groups happening all around us today. John encourages them to continue walking in fellowship with Christ. I believe if we just stop and set everything in life aside and put our focus on Christ daily, then these distractions from the left and the right won't have any effect on our faith in Jesus Christ. My first point tonight is that we may have fellowship. We may have fellowship. Again, as I stated here, chapters 1 and 2 deal with the fellowship. Those three tests of true fellowship, the test of obedience, the test of love, and the test of truth. John reminds us and takes us back to the beginning as he did in the Gospel of John, where he begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is writing to believers here and was opposing those false teachings of the Gnostic opponents. He says in verse 2, And show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. John here is presenting Christ as life. Jesus is called life. He is the living life, and he is the one who has life in himself. Think for a moment the life that you have in you. The opportunities that we have. You know, we go about our day every day doing the things that we need to do, and we praise the Lord for those things. But I think we must remember that the things that we're allowed to do, our job, are all blessings. Our finances are all blessings. Our opportunities to, to grow a family and spend time together is all blessings. God wants our attention on him. Christ is life and life in himself. <clears throat> John begins this letter here with the theme of eternal life. He also ends with the theme of eternal life. Life and eternal life are the hallmarks of those with the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Look here in verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. You know when my life comes to an end? I'm going to spend an eternity with heaven, Amen. with Jesus Christ. And I pray that's your testimony today as well. Fellowship. The spiritual bond of the believer with Christ. Amen. We think about fellowship with Christ. Do we truly have daily fellowship with Jesus Christ? Are we the type to get up in the morning and take the time to study God's word? Are we the type to get up and take those times throughout our day in prayer that God would lead and direct in all that we do? Do we have that true fellowship with Jesus Christ? Turn back with me to the book of John, chapter 15, real quick. I'm going to jump around here for a few minutes, so hang with us.
When we talk about this, this fellowship, this spiritual bond of a believer with Christ, I looked at these, uh, these examples, these writings here. In John chapter 15, in verse 1, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges, purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing." Many of us know those verses, the vine and the branches. You see, without Christ, we can do nothing. If nothing else, that should be the sticky note on our front door when we go to leave in the mornings. Hey, remember, without Christ today, I can do nothing. So let me backtrack and bring Christ along. Let me begin my day with that fellowship. There, I, I, I read a story we're going to go to 1 Corinthians next, by the way, chapter 12. I, I read a story. I think it was in um, one of my commentary books, but uh, it, it was pretty funny. These gentlemen from a third world country came to America and were so amazed of how you could just turn a knob on a faucet and water came out. And they admired this the entirety or the entire time they were here. And um, so when they left, they took the faucets out of the hotel. <laughs> Just to realize when they got back to their country that it had nothing to do with the faucet, but it had to have the connection. It had to have the pipe. You see, when you think about the vine and the branches, we can do nothing without Christ. We must have Christ in our life. We must have Christ in all that we do each and every day. In um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, we see this same example of the body and the head, the first and foremost. We also see there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, the body and the head being of one body, this includes Christ. We need to remember that this one body includes Christ. And we must have Christ in our life. 1 Corinthians 1.9, we see the fact that God is faithful. God is faithful. What an amazing thing to wake up and think about each and every day. With the things that we face in life, we can look back and say, God is faithful. You know, God came to this earth, died, was buried, and rose again for you and for me. That should be enough right there to get our blood flowing during the day. Praise the Lord. You know, we can face all these difficulty times. We can face all these circumstances in life of of. You know, why, do, why are we going through this right now? Or, or what's next? That, that's the new thing. What's next? You, you can, it's, some of these things are funny, too. There's some funny stuff on Facebook that people put up about what's coming next. But it doesn't matter. Because what's next is what God wants to be next. And if we have fellowship with Christ in our life, then we don't need to worry about it. Our worry is what Christ has, sent, has left us here to do, and that's to reach others with the gospel of Christ. That should be our focus every day. Our focus needs to be on spreading the good news. Here in verse 3, back in 1 John, he says at the end there, and truly our fellowship is with the Father. Our fellowship is with the Father. The first point here was that we may have fellowship. The second point, letter B, that we might have joy. 
You see, if we have fellowship with Christ, then it says right here in verse 4, as these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. What is joy? What does joy look like in one's life? I'm not talking about the temporary joy that you may get. I was praying today on my birthday that my temporary joy of a new Corvette would show up from my wife, but <laughs> it didn't happen. But that's temporary joy. Because where we live tomorrow, it would be so nasty you couldn't drive it anyway. But the temporary joys in life, what is true joy? Joy is completed with the assurance of fellowship. Joy is completed with the fellowship grounded in our believer's relationship with Jesus Christ. If we want joy in our life, then we must have fellowship with Christ in all that we do. John chapter 15, if you would go back there. John chapter 15 and verse 11. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Let's look at another verse, verse 16, John chapter 16 and verse 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Over in 2 John, in chapter 1, in verse 12, John states, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. And then one more place, Psalm 16. Let's look at that together. Psalm chapter 16 says, Preserve, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. That's a good place to start right there. That is an excellent place to start. O oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another of God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names unto my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a uh, goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We want to talk about this test of obedience. Let's start back here in verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put... My trust. It's a great place for me to start in the mornings. Over in verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. And then verse 11, in thy presence is fullness of joy. That we may have joy. I pray that each and every one of us have a joyful Christian life. You know the folks that we encounter every day, whether we want to believe it or not, look at us. Do they see a joyful person? 
Or do they see just another ordinary lost person? Do they see joy in our life to the point where they want to know more? Why are you so happy? Hi, what's your name? I want to hang out with you. There's no worry in the world. That's right, there is none because I don't have any worries in this world. My joy is in the Lord. Thirdly, test of obedience. The test of obedience, as we look here back in 1 John, verses 5 through 10, <clears throat> God is light, and to obey him is to walk in light. You know, you try to put a picture to these things. We, um, just a few weeks ago, I guess now, we, we ordered these LED lights that... Um, to light up the camp, because if you've ever been there at night, it, you forget it. It's completely dark. And so we added some new LED lights for the game field and around camp, and th these things are amazing. You flip the switch on, and it ended up lighting up the whole entire hundred and some acres. I mean, <laughs> these things are ginormous. But you think of this as you think of, are you walking in the light? You can go through life just as dark as you can, removing God from your life, or you can walk through life as a shining light, hopefully not as bright as those lights or nobody will come around you. But people want to see that light in your life. It is possible for people to say they're in the light However, they live in darkness. Sin in the life of a believer breaks the fellowship, which in turn will destroy our joy. And a lot of times in life we think, well, I don't sin, because we think of the big things. But think about the little things, the distractions in life that take you away from God. Think about the attitudes that we generate by those distractions. You know, the world has made it easy. We can go right home if we have a television, and I don't condone, to, I have a television, but it's just one button and it turns on. And you never know what's on the other side until the screen comes up. So many little distractions can take us away and cause us to live in darkness. Darkness destroys one's joy. John here is urging readers to seek proper fellowship with God, realizing that they have been purchased by God through Christ's death on the cross. That's you and I, folks. That's us. Coming to the realization that Christ has purchased us through his blood. 1 Corinthians 6.20 tells us, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God is light, and in him is no darkness. Let's take a few minutes and break down these verses. Verse 6, it says, If we shall, oh, I'm sorry, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The claim here is that we have fellowship. The contradiction, we continue to walk in darkness. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The claim, we have no sin. The contradiction, we deceive ourselves. And then verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The claim, we have not sinned. The contradiction, we make him a liar. I pray that we don't have that stain on our relationship with Jesus Christ. One cannot claim to have fellowship with God and walk in darkness. One cannot say, I have no sin, and be not deceived. And one cannot say, I have not sinned, and not make God a liar. Fellowship 
is more than a claim. Fellowship is a pattern of living. What does our fellowship with Christ look like today? Are we pleasing to the Lord? Is our life pleasing to God? Fellowship with one another expands on this fellowship with God. God proves himself faithful and just. God is faithful to his promise to forgive. Verse 9 reminds us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I go back to those distractions such as the big red ball from left field that knocks us off course. How long does it take us to get back on course? How many times do we have to be knocked over before we realize we're out of fellowship? That our focus needs to be on Christ and Christ alone. So in conclusion, I want to ask ourselves for just a moment. Let's test our obedience. Let's test our obedience. Are we walking in light or are we walking in darkness? Matthew tells us in chapter 5 that ye are the light of the world. As believers, are we humble and confess our sins to the one who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins? Or do we continue to go through life not paying any attention to it? You see, God saved us from hell. There's more to salvation. There's a life that we have to live here. There's justification, but then there's sanctification on our way to glorification. It just doesn't mean that we're saved and now we can... Well, I'll pray and I'll go to church on Sunday. I should be good. No, there's a life that we must live according to God's word. The Christian life is, joy, is a joyful life that others around us should want to see and learn more about. Are we living a life that's pleasing to the Lord? I pulled this out of a book I'm reading by Paul Chapel. As it pertains to the Holy Spirit and what God has given us as a comforter here in this world. And the fact that we can communicate and contact our God anytime we need him. He says every human being is born with the inherent longing for companionship. Companionship. And every heart craves a companionship and no human being that no human being can provide. While we cherish the closeness of family and friends, these earthly relationships ultimately fall short. For no single person can fill the heart with joy, stability, strength, and purpose. No flesh and blood can provide eternal resources to the souls and spirit. The deepest desires in each of us calls for a transcendent companion, one who defies the boundaries of time, space, and finiteness. He is one who knows you intimately and loves you unconditionally. He is the only one who can care for you eternally, sustain you limitless, limitlessly, strengthen you abundantly, and lead you perfectly through this life. He is the Holy Spirit of God. Once he comes into your life, he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Written by Paul Chapel. You see, no matter what happens in life, and again, this, this message was for me, because I have to remind myself every day that I'm here for the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we go through life every day, we should keep our focus on that fellowship with Christ. That time in the mornings or that time in the evenings or maybe in the middle of the day, I don't know how your schedule is, 
that time that you can stop and spend that time in devotions with the Lord, or that time that you can pray to God. I pray more to God walking than I do stopping. And maybe I need to fix that in my life. But that time that we spend with the Lord, let's strengthen that fellowship with Christ, that we may have that joy. You see, God wants us to be joyful Christians. God wants to use each and every one of us as a testimony to lead others to Christ. I don't know about you, but before I was saved, I don't think I would have went up to a grumpy Christian and asked them how to get saved. Or someone that's distracted by the things in life and not focused on the things of God. And so I encourage each one of us today to focus on that fellowship with Christ. To focus on just that closeness that we may have that joy. Jesus Christ loves each and every one of us, and there's no question about that. He died on the cross for you and I. So let's live a life according to his will, and let's live a life that's pleasing to him. And let's strengthen that fellowship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity that we can come and study your word. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, convict hearts where you see the need. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to preach your word, and I just thank you and praise you for uh, opening up uh, the book that you would have us to look at, and I thank you for your word, and I pray, Lord, that you would uh, forgive me for the sins in my life. Lord, help us to not allow the distractions in the world around us to come into our life and intercede in the work that you would have us to do. Lord, help us to be focused. Father, give us that strength to keep our fellowship and closeness with you, that we may have that joy. Father, I do thank you for that gift of salvation. And I thank you for those opportunities that we have to reach out and share the gospel with others. Father, help us to not take for granted what you've done for us. And Lord, I just pray that you'll lead and guide in the rest of this time this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, let's allow the Holy Spirit to continue to work in our hearts. You know, as he was preaching, the Lord put his finger on a, a few things in my life. Um, I need to walk closer to the Lord. Uh, I, I like one of the things he said, fellowship is more than a claim, it's a pattern of living. Are we living a life of fellowship with God? Are we walking in the light that he has given us? The Bible says, in thy light shall we see light. Are we, are we obeying in every area? Have we obeyed everything that God's given us to do? Let's allow the Lord to be thorough in our lives, that we might have fellowship, that we might have joy. In just a moment, I'm asking the pianist to begin to play 391. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to be thorough with us. and Let's get specific. Let's get specific about it. What specifically will we allow the Lord to, to change in our lives? Um, what is God specifically stirred up in our hearts? What do I need to do different specifically tomorrow? What is going to change? What am I going to stop doing? What am I going to start doing? God always deals with us specifically. May we, may we obey him. I'm asked the pianist to begin to play 391. The hymn says, When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. Verse 4 says, We can never prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. Have we, have we surrendered everything to the Lord? I love verse 5. Then in fellowship sweet, we'll sit at his feet. We'll walk by his side. May we make this our prayer. What he says we will do. Where he sends, we will go. And we trust and obey him. He's trustworthy. If he's trustworthy, then we can trust him with our life and we can obey everything he sends, he asks us to do. Let's, let's, let's let the Lord lead. These altars are open. We're going to stand together and sing this. Let God be thorough in your heart. I'm asking Brother Sam to help us in this song and sing. And as, as the Lord leads, you respond to God. Let's sing this song, 391. Feel free to grab a hymnal and sing with us. 
We thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for challenging us. Help us to be, help us to be obedient. Lord, help us to trust. Help us to live in fellowship with you. Enjoy the, the joy of that fellowship. Help us to walk in thy light. I pray that you would help us to keep this close to our heart this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.